So thank you for joining us here at Unity of Flagstaff. I am Reverend Penny Honey, and it is always, always our joy to have you check in with us here on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.unityofflagstaff.org. Also check out our website at www.unityofflagstaff.org. Lots of .orgs in there. So check us out to see what else is going on in the ministry. I wanted to remind you that on that website page, of course, you can donate to this ministry by hitting the donate button. You can also donate to the Family Food Center. <laughs> there, I got it said, the Flagstaff Family Food Center. So be sure and do that, check that out on our website. Um, I'd like to also tell you that on election day from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., the sanctuary will be open. We won't be doing facilitated prayer, but it will be open for prayer. It will be a meditative setting. Come in, little respite holding a consciousness. So join us on election day between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. Also that night there will be some of Reverend Penny's soon-to-be famous soup in individual servings that you can take home for you. So there you go. Now we're going to enjoy the music of Sean Dennehy as he performs Christina Aguilar's song Beautiful. Enjoy. <laughs> A song called Beautiful. It was written by Linda Perry. Um, you might know her from Four Non Blondes, 90s band. Um, and she wrote this song and produced it for Christina Aguilera. Here's, uh, here's my version of it. Today, no matter what we 
Thank you for this time of being present. And thank yourself for taking this time to allow yourself to quiet your minds, quiet your bodies. So we just rest into that for a moment as we breathe. Truly consciously breathe in and breathe out. It is here in this quiet that we have the opportunity to rejuvenate and relax into the presence. We affirm in this time, God is ever present and I am present to that. God is ever present. I am present to that. Allowing ourselves now to push those thoughts and concerns and all of those things that take space and energy. We gently push them to the outside of our thoughts. Just out on the edge as we make more space to reconnect and allow ourselves to be in the presence. We breathe in, we breathe out. God is ever present and I am present to that. And in this place of knowing Feel the waves of gratitude. We feel the sense of safety. We know the peace of mind and body in this moment where all healing is happening. In this moment, we're All words are calmed and come from our divine mind where all thoughts are pure and aligned with our greatest expression. God is ever present and I am present to that. We breathe in this sense of knowing, for this absolute pure connection with our higher mind, with our greater thoughts, we know the oneness that we are a part of. We recognize the presence within us. sense of power and peace. And we breathe in and we breathe out. God is 
is ever present and I am present to that. We give thanks now for this and all things. And as we breathe in, we bring back those thoughts and concerns and energy and we see them wrapped in the peace of this moment we see them enfolded in the light we see the power of God all around and through us as we affirm God is ever present and I am present give thanks. We claim it as so, and so it is. Amen. many of you are uh, fans of The Princess Bride, but there's an unforgettable scene in there by one of the characters and he says, I'm waiting. How do you feel about waiting? Don't you love to wait? Don't you love to have to wait when you had your timeline all figured out? I don't know about you guys, but minute to minute to minute, I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go there and then I'm going to do this. And then you have to wait. As humans, we've all had to endure what appears to be such an irritation or such a hassle of waiting. It's just part of life. We wait. We hurry up sometimes and then we wait. And then we go and then we wait. When will this be over? Is what we might ask as an adult. So when will this be over? If anybody's got information on that, I want you to email me at office at unityoflagstaff.org. And when I say this, I just mean this entirely new environment that we're living in. It's not as new as it was how many months ago? How many months was it? Has it been? January. Seven? Eight. Eight? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So no, I mean, really, waiting is not a strong suit of most people. You know, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers said it best. The waiting is the hardest part. Are there any Tom Petty fans here? So you take it on faith. You take it to heart. The waiting is the hardest part. So you can thank me later for getting that song stuck in your head. And we will resolve that when Ryan Byer performs that song for us after the message. Don't slide the little red button out there now after the message. So just hang in there, okay? So breathing into peace, yeah, I can do that, right? Breathing into love, I can do that. Breathing into harmony and seeing that for our planet, I can be there. Breathing into waiting, not so much. But some waiting is actually quite enthralling. In fact, I would say that some waiting is cherished time. The man waiting at the altar to see his husband walk down the aisle so that they may freely state their vows and profess their love for each other. The bride waiting on her to be husband. The wild game in the woods, Michael, that you'll see if you slow down enough and if you'll wait sometimes and be patient. Of course, unless you are Michael and Helen where they'll just walk right up to your car. That's possible. Waiting. There are times that it should be cherished. You know, I enjoy waiting for the seasons. I just had enough wait time this year between spring and fall and fall and winter to prepare for the four seasons. Now the four seasons at my house, they are haul wood, split wood, carry wood, stack wood. That's what they are. And I love every one of them. After all, waiting truly could be considered prep time. 
Some call it quiet time. Some call it meditation, time of renewal. Okay, I can go with that. But how about prep time? Turn that wait time into something that serves you. I need, perhaps this isn't true for everyone in the room, but I need a little prep time in today's world just for life. Just for life some days. I need to prepare. And that's not necessarily unique to a pandemic or to an election. That just is something that as humans, we kind of like to have an idea of what's going on. I'm not the only one that feels that way. I mean, I know I tend to lean toward the control freak side, but I think everybody wants to have a little prep time and know somewhat what to expect. You know, Benjamin Franklin reminds us that by failing to prepare, you prepare to fail. After all, a little prep time doesn't hurt us. And that prep time that we are now going to use or call our waiting time is what Deepak Chopra calls the silent gap between your thoughts. Now the silent gap between your thoughts is your window, he says, to the cosmic mind. And to continue with Chopra, he says the cosmic mind, now stay with me on this, the cosmic mind is cosmic consciousness. And cosmic consciousness is when we escape the limitations of everyday perception. That's the cosmic consciousness that Deepak Chopra says we find in the gap. And that gap can be waiting. Not bad. I'll take that. In fact, sign me up. Is it available on Prime? Can I get it tomorrow? Right? Because I'm so good at waiting. Right? Not there yet? Me either. Cosmic consciousness? Mm, I got a little ways to go. I will tell you that it has felt like we have been in the twilight zone a lot recently. I don't know about cosmic consciousness, but it certainly feels like we've been in the twilight zone. How do we start to find the gift that's in that gap? How do we do that? Between things, how do we escape the limitations of everyday perceptions? I think that's what some of those Bible characters did. I think that's what some of our wise, amazing teachers through, down through history have done, exactly that. They escaped the limitations of everyday perceptions because they were willing to be in the gap, in the wait they were willing to be. And since waiting is apparently something we're going to have to continue to do in our lives, in fact, there's gonna be a few days here that we're gonna feel like we're in that waiting holding pattern. And since it is something that we're going to have to deal with and that we're going to experience in this life, and when we hear that recording that says, your estimated wait time is, and we are a little aggravated about that, take a breath. In fact, take one right now. Just take a breath. Do you feel that there's power in that moment when you just stop for just that split second and you start to wait for the next breath to show up rather than running out there and getting it? Could we start to see wait time as a resource? What if we saw wait, the wait, W-A-I-T, yeah, it's coming, an acronym, wisdom and inspiration time. What if that's what wait could mean? Or how about this one, wits and ingenuity thinking. What if that's what the wait represented? What if it was in that weight, in that gap, that we start to move into a higher level of creativity and a higher level of thinking and a higher level of being present? We know that in the absence of information, our little human selves will just make it up. 
We will make it up as we go if we don't have information. And in the wait, we are famous for making it up. Ever do that, anyone? Am I the only one that does that? In the absence of information, I just start to run a story because it fills the wait time. It fills it up. And I don't even have to take a breath and be present to what could possibly be wisdom and inspiration. What if it truly is the window to the cosmic mind and that I could escape limitations of everyday perceptions? Think of what I could heal physically, emotionally, spiritually. Think of what we could heal on the planet if we could move to that level of consciousness. Feel that for a moment. The power is in the weight. You know, I have a little, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little sign hanging on my computer and it says, don't hit send. <laughs> Type that email, tell them what you think, and don't hit send. Saved me a lot of times. And that is a form of waiting. That's taking a step back. And I will tell you, it has given me an escape many times out of things that I didn't want to get into. Don't hit send. Or how about those times that we get so far off course that because we don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I, I, I'm going to go do it anyway. I don't want to wait. And we get so far off course because we couldn't take a breath. We couldn't pause for just that moment to give ourselves the opportunity to hear that wisdom, to see that inspiration. So I have a story for you. I'm gonna tell a little story on myself. So this week was Southwest Region, Unity Regions Conference. And of course it was all on Zoom. And um, I'm probably not famous for my uh, my ability to enjoy conferences, even the ones in person, let alone the ones on Zoom, because, you know, I got lots of things to do. I got lots of things to do. And, you know, they want you to uh, settle down and wait and be calm. So, and I, I thank the wisdom of the leadership in this community that knows that those are good things for me to do, and they support me in that. So thank you to our leadership for that, that wisdom. But I will tell you, at least the first day was a real downer for me. It was just a downer. Do you know how many amazing things these Unity Ministries are doing out there during the pandemic? They are producing these incredible videos. They're giving away, they're, they are getting awards at some churches for the technology and what they have produced in place of Sunday services. And all of a sudden I heard this familiar song in my head as I'm watching these people receive these awards and I'm listening to all this creativity that's been going on in all these unity churches. And the song went like this. You're not doing enough, Penny. You're not doing it fast enough, Penny. You're not smart enough, Penny. Why have you not been doing these things with Unity of Flags? What have you been doing? And I felt beat into the ground. Now, that's a story. In place of information, I made up a story. I made up a story that I needed to do it faster and I needed to keep up and I needed to be more. Just wasn't being very creative in that moment when I'm holding those kind of thoughts. There was a one new idea that struck me and stuck with me when I was in that frame of mind. One breath. I could have taken one breath and waited. And then I would have recalled the beautiful review that the board recently gave me. I would recall the true information is they renewed your contract, Penny. You must be doing something right. But I 
told a story. That was not the intention of that conference, I will guarantee you. But had I been willing to wait for it, as the conference went along, the reason they started out with those awards is because they wanted us to know what was possible. They weren't trying to make me feel bad. I don't think they sat down with their agenda and said, who's this Reverend Penny, honey? Let's just make her feel really crummy about the job she's doing. I don't think that was their intention. In fact, I know it wasn't. And then I sat, no, that's not true at all. I swept my carport. That's what I did. I got home and I went out and I swept my carport. That carport's magical. <laughs> because as I was able to see the work that I was doing by this mound of leaves that I sweep off of my carport every day, now I felt okay. I felt like I was doing something. And I heard the words, wait. I said, that's not fair, that's this week's message. No, no, no. What I heard was, wait. Wait. Do what is yours to do. Stay out of their business. It's right in front of you. It's on the top of every one of your gratitude lists, Penny. How grateful you are to be doing what you're doing here at Unity of Flagstaff. Wait. And I found peace in that moment. And I went back the second day and attended that Zoom conference and I had a new experience. In fact, I didn't have to be the first one to have a comment or have an idea about what we were working on. I noticed I could wait. I noticed I could wait and I could be okay and I was enough. Now this isn't just my story. I know that there are things in your lives that cause you to want to forge ahead and move forward and keep moving forward. Damn the torpedoes. And what Spirit is saying to you is, here's a gap for your thoughts to drop into that will empower you in ways of wisdom and inspiration. Just wait, Penny. Just wait. It's right there. Now, there was a great article, because I started, you know, I could see I was, I was having this little hang up with this conference thing, and I could also see the dovetail to the message, of course, as always. So I got out this article I'd read, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago, actually, and it was in Psychology Today, and it was written by Dr. E. L. Marnaz. And what she said was this, is there are ways to wait and not get stressed out. There are ways to wait and not run over yourself, right? And I started looking at those four little items, that ways that she was numbering there or giving to us, and I realized how they paralleled with everything that we teach in Unity. I said, okay, that's great. That's really great. Oh, wait, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Here we go again, right? So the first thing she says is stimulate your senses. So my interpretation from a metaphysical perspective around that is the faculty of imagination. It stimulates your senses to allow yourself to imagine something, to create something. You know, Charles Fillmore said that if imagination were treated seriously, it could be of great force and value in the development of our character. That's pretty solid information. And then she said, pick a healthy distraction. My interpretation of that is consciously choose the thoughts you're thinking. And in the face of no information, don't make up a story. And then she says, take a deep breath, which of course that translates right into meditate. Principle number four, through prayer and meditation, we align our heart mind with God. 
So far, none of this is too complicated. So far, it hangs on our wall here in the sanctuary. She also said this, recite helpful words. I said, do you hear your affirmation in there? Through thoughts, words, and actions, we live the truth we know, unity principle number five. Recite helpful words to yourself. That chatter, that voice that wants to push you forward and keep you from waiting and being present. Recite some helpful words to that little voice. Don't do like I do sometimes and say, would you just shut up? <laughs> would you just shut up? Dr. Mernaz says this. She recommends affirming things like this. I believe in myself. I am in charge of how I feel. I am deserving. Any of that sound familiar? And how about this one? Like Sean reminded us with his song. I am beautiful. Remember, some waiting should be cherished. Waiting can serve you when you're willing to look at it as prep time. Allow wait, the wait to become a gift. Wisdom and inspiration time is a gift. And above all, Remember that you are beautiful. The waiting may be the hardest part, but we take it in faith. We take it to the heart, and then perhaps the waiting won't be so difficult. Allow yourself the time for wisdom and inspiration. Be willing to wait. Know that God has got you. Because God's got you. Namaste, my friends. Thank you. We will now enjoy the music of Ryan Bider. He will perform the song, the Tom Petty song, Waiting is the Hardest Part. Thank you. Roll tape. Oh, baby, don't it feel like heaven right now? Don't it feel like something from a dream? Yeah, I've never known nothing quite like this. Don't it feel like tonight might never be again? We know better than to try and pretend Baby, no one could ever told me about this I say, yeah, yeah Yeah, 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 yeah The waiting is the hardest part Every day you see one more card You take it on faith You take it to the heart The waiting is the hardest part Yeah, I might have chased a couple women around All it ever got me was down Then there were those that made me feel good But never as good as I feel right now Baby, you're the only one that's ever known how To make me wanna live like I wanna live now Say so yeah, 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 yeah The way it is is the hardest part Every day you get one more yard You take it on faith You take it to the heart The waiting is the hardest part Don't let it kill you, baby Don't let it get to you Don't let them kill you, baby Don't let them get to you I'll be your bleeding heart I'll be your crying fool Don't let them go too far Don't let it get to you yeah, 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 the waiting is the hardest part. 
Every day you get one more yard You take it on faith, you take it to the heart The waiting is the hardest part The waiting is the hardest part That was Sammy, everybody. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. That was incredible. And we so appreciate you. Waiting truly can be the hardest thing to do unless we turn it into time that works for us. So I appreciate you. Thank you very much, Ryan. So don't forget, 1800 South Milton Suite 103, you can drop off your uh, non-perishables um, here at the sanctuary. In fact, um, don't forget that we are open 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. on election night. Bring your canned food by then if you want to. We look forward to that and we appreciate being able to support Flagstaff Family Food Center. Sunday, November 14th, we're gonna do something new. Pastor Penny picks up and delivers is what we're calling that. We are going to, of course, have our regular Sunday morning message, but I'll be coming around from house to house, or well, shall we say yard to yard, to pick up your donation of gently used or new coats for our coat drive this year children's, men's, and women's coats. Last year, this community provided 67 coats to the Flagstaff Family Shelter. We intend to top that. We already have 50 handmade scarves and hats to go with coats, so bring those coats in or email me at office at unityofflagstaff.org to let me know that I can come by and see you on Sunday, November 14th. I'd love to stand in the yard, wave at you, pick up your bags of coats, maybe even pick up some non-perishable food. We'll just make this a, a really big love fest. So I look forward to that. So thank you again for tuning in and checking us out. Of course, for more information about the ministry, look at www.unityofflagstaff.org. We appreciate your continued support. Be blessed, my friends, and don't be afraid of the wait. Namaste.